I'm market analyst Michael Filigera of Traders Helping Traders with the Eye of the Storm podcast, helping you make informed trading decisions for the week ahead. Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Eye of the Storm podcast, uh, today being recorded on uh, Thursday, November the 17th, 2022. My guest today is my good friend, Richard Friesen, and our history together goes back to our our days on the Pacific <laughs> Options Exchange on the options trading floor. Uh, and we have shared memories and everything all grouped together because it was many years together. And my interest has always stayed with Rich. And we reconnected uh, probably 10 years ago. And because when the floors decided to kind of they closed, basically, <laughs> um, Rich went off floor, I went off floor. I went off and set up a home office and continued to trade. And Rich furthered his studies in neuropsychology, which again, drew me right back into conversation with him many years later, as I find it to be an extremely important subject. And hence the reason that I have an interest in doing today's interview and discussion with Richard. So what we wanna talk about today is of course, a little bit of Richard's background, we want to talk about Mind Muscles Academy, which always sounds like a little bit of a strange name, but it has a lot of significance. And that is Rich's company where he does all of his work. And then lastly, I want to be able to include today uh, some of the great work that you've done that sits available on Mind Muscles Academy, but also uh, an extremely interesting and valuable book for those that choose to read it. And that is Rich's latest book called Conversations with Money. A private conversation with money. Private conversations. You don't with even money. have to share it. <laughs> there you go. Um, but thank you for that correction, Rick, Richard, and welcome. Thank and you. Thank you for being my guest today. You know, one of the things about our connection is that on the floor, character counts if you you know deny trades if you don't act honorably eventually the the floor culture just kind of squeezes you out because right. so much money is just traded by voice command and and so as a result getting to know you in that very visceral way has really been wonderful and is the foundation for our current great relationship thank you thank you so take us back I know, because as we know, we both are retired, and I understand that it's like sometimes somebody says, take you back, and it's like, how far did you want to go? <laughs> um, but just a little bit of a background on how you stepped into this world of trading. Oh, my gosh. I had a friend, Joe Ritchie, who eventually built Chicago Research and Trading. Uh, he passed about uh, almost a year ago now. But... I knew I I wanted to be in a in a world. I'd finished my master's degree in clinical psychology. And I and again, this is really important about mindset. I didn't feel worthy enough to go to Chicago and join him. Mm -hmm. He said, Come on, we're out, Rich. And that was in the early days of CRT, and that cost me a lot of money. My mindset and internal limitations. I have to be worthy. So I went to Merrill Lynch to learn futures trading. Uh, and then from there, I felt I had a choice. I had a background in, in the uh, trading markets. I leased my own seat on the Chicago Merc uh, Mercantile Exchange uh, to trade the S&P futures. I moved, the Chicago, uh, moved for the summer to Chicago, took the family out. And uh, once I got there, Joe said, oh, why don't you just work for us? So that is the start of how I got into the market. And I don't know why, but Joe, <laughs> my first day on the floor, he put me in the middle of the S&P futures pit. For those of you who don't know, there must have been, what, three, 400 people there yelling and screaming. People had worked there for years, people in ethnic cliques. I mean, it was a brutal place. 
he was Rich Friesen. I didn't know the hand signal. And I was there to hand to hedge hundreds of lots of S&P futures to offset the option deltas. Well, that lasted about four days before they realized that wasn't working. And they put me in the S&P uh, options on futures pit. And and hence it all began. Just give us a hint. Of what year was this? That was, uh, let's see, 1984, maybe. 84. Yeah. And uh, in the options pit, one thing that I should say, that uh, uh, the trainer there told me after a week that I was the worst trainee he had ever had. <laughs> Yeah, we've we've all had those people in in our lives. Well, um, he was right. <laughs> I don't argue with it. At that on that particular day, but since that time, um, many things have changed. Many things have changed, and it was driven by persistence, resilience, a desire to know myself, to continually self-correct. And I think that's one of the messages that we can leave with your audience. Yes, that and I find that well, one of the one of the areas that I want to kind of talk to you is that you and I both come from a trading floor environment where there were pits and and trust me, the word pits is being kind um <laughs> it, because it was an accumulation of people again coming from many different areas and many different uh ethnic backgrounds. And we're all getting put into a pit with the same thing. We all want to make a million dollars. We all want mm -hmm. to be the most successful that there is to be. And um, on the Pacific Exchange, which is where I started, and I know that you came out, that when they first decided to open up an options exchange here in San Francisco, they did try to figure out how they were going to get market makers to come and trade to get this all going. And at the time, there was the thought about, you know, we'll go and try to import from Chicago. And they were like, why would we want to go there when we've got it all happening here? So I know that the original um, administrative people for the options exchange went to Reno and Las Vegas. And they ended up recruiting gamblers to come in and make markets in the options. So the original pits were were extremely interesting <laughs> to say Indeed. the least and over the years of course that has evolved and that has changed and then again over the decades since the floors have basically disappeared it has evolved and changed again yeah and what i've admired about your work is that it it evolves with um, because it's the basic problems that people confront about themselves, about trading, about money, about different obstacles that can stand in one's way, even when they have the best intentions. And I know that your work basically started on the floors as a market maker, and um, that when you were here in San Francisco, you started your own group. And you caught my attention because I remember being on the floor going like, wow, he's he's training these guys and he's doing something different because I I never had met where there, your market makers uh, that you had trained were calm. They actually didn't yell. They actually didn't get pushy. They actually didn't get insulting. And they, they just were very focused and made money day after day. Day after day, they made money. So congratulations on putting that training together, by the way. Um, but I know that a lot of the tools that you put into that training also remains in your work today that you bring to people of all different corners of not necessarily just trading, but what, what you teach is applicable in so many different areas. Yeah. Do you remember those trading cards? They were like about three by five. Yes. 
and you had them in, a, in our jacket yeah. pockets. Yeah. I wrote in teeny letters every time I made a mistake, every time I learned something, every time another trader made a mistake, what the markets were doing, what uh, indicators of and tells of where, where the market was going. And, and after about three years, I had a stack about this high, fine print on both sides. And that eventually became the foundation for the training manual and how the traders that I, when I grew my firm, all the information and training that they needed. Wow. So when did you start that firm? What year was that? Uh, that was probably 96, 97. I traded starting in on my own. I left CRT and started like in eight ninety one, And then uh, I, I have a story about how my income progressed, but I think you've, you've heard that story about the voice. I have, but whoever's going to be listening to our podcast, we don't know. So please okay. share uh, it was April of 95, and I was fast asleep, middle of the night, and there was a voice. Rich, you're only worth $200,000. Sat up in bed, looked around. <laughs> Wife was still sleeping, nobody else in the room. Where'd that voice come from? Deep inside of me. Got up, showered, dressed. I was in Marin at the time, drove across the Golden Gate Bridge, the exchange wasn't open yet. And remember those pillars in front, mm -hmm. sat down and thought about my life. Well, so let me give you some background. I went on my own and left CRT and was very careful. First year, I made $125,000. You know, with CRT, I had hundreds of millions of dollars of capital. I had quants, computers. I mean, just all the support you could possibly want. They had their fingers in the front end of the volatility pipeline. Mm -hmm. But so next year I did 150, then 175, then 200. And it was, that voice was April of 95. And what happened in 95 was, uh, it was Micron, the Micron pit, mm -hmm. and it just was taking off. And there was only about three of us market makers in there and money just poured in. I mean, you couldn't help it. By the middle of February, I was up my $200,000 limit. End of March, I was up my $200,000 limit. Yeah, April, May, June, June. And so what happened was that that voice in the middle of the night reflected that limit I had. And so when the doors opened, I went to the floor and I normally stood at the back and carefully calculated my orders. But I went to the front of the pit right between the two busiest brokers and right in front of the order book official where I could hear all the orders and get first crack at them. So of course, as you know, you don't rent a spot. <laughs> and I won't mention the name of whose person was there because you wouldn't know them. <laughs> I know them very well. I know them. And, yes. And so he came in and the, you know, just a minute, a few minutes before the bell, he kind of tapped me on the shoulder I didn't move. He started pushing, he shoving match. The exchange official said, you know, there's a huge fine. I think it was around 10,000 or something if we right. got into a fight. Right. And so eventually the, the bell went off and I'm going to get back from the mic here. I went, buy 20, sell you 50, buy 100, sold, sold, buy them. <laughs> Every option series that opened, I was there. And I went, went on to make many times that $200,000. And then that became the capital for the firm. But the important part of the story here is that I had an internal limitation. Mm -hmm. And when I started hiring traders, some of them had similar limitations. And we can talk about that because I think it might be of interest to people who are finding themselves making money, losing it, making money and losing it because that is uh, driven sometimes by mindset. Right, right. Which I do find mindset to be an extremely important topic that most people don't understand. So why don't we turn to the mindset? Because I know that's a very important piece of your work previous, today, and going forward. 
And it's often the missing piece or link in a trader because they're not making that connection. Like you said, we can get to a point where we realize I'm I'm not making any forward momentum here. I make a little, I give a little, I make a little, I give a little, I'm stuck. And then suddenly I'm not paying my bills, et cetera, et cetera. And so they're feeling failure. They're feeling uh, mm -hmm. what's wrong with me, what's going on, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of, I'm, I'm kind of segueing in because it isn't necessarily that something is wrong with them. It's what you just mentioned, limiting ourselves. You put a self, you put a barrier around what your po potential is yeah. for whatever reason. So why don't we go right to that? And, and because that segues right into the mindset. Yeah, so the barriers, you know, if I have a, a graphic called the confidence circle, a new trader starts out, wow, I've got this. Sometimes they're engineers, sometimes they're statisticians or they're technical people, or they come from a completely different field. They say, oh, I can learn this. And the thought is, I can learn it like I can learn programming, or I can learn a skill mm -hmm. or carpentry or anything like that. I just got to figure it out. So then they make sometimes, in fact, beginning traders uh, make a little money because they're looking at the pattern fresh. They don't have any uh, ghosts in their closets, you know, none of the fear, and they're just la di da. And sometimes they can do okay. And then they take their first loss. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, my dream. And sometimes the dream is uh, my dad will respect me. Uh, I'll get the Ferrari, the mansion. I'll have uh, my friends will think I'm really as smart as I am. Uh, I will prove to myself that I'm a really uh, awesome person or whatever it is. So as every tick is a referendum on their deepest core, how they value themselves. Mm -hmm. And so when when you're in that under that kind of pressure, how can you make money when every tick against you goes, ooh, you're unworthy, you're unworthy. So that's the first stage. And then the next place is, okay, I've got to get a strategy. So then they work, they get indicators, they, they follow somebody, they buy a strategy, and it may even work for a while. Yes, I've got this nailed. I'm going to be okay as a human being. Then, of course, at some point, the strategy, the, the market, um, what I call the market mood shifts and the strategy doesn't work. And then back down. Oh, oh my God. Then they realize, well, it, in certain markets, certain strategies work. In other markets, strategies don't work or you need a different strategy. So then they get much better at looking at the type of the market and doing a lot of things that you do is really looking at the charts, the order flow and all that. And they internalize a lot of the market patterns and are able to bring the right strategy to it. And eventually they get to the place where they say, I don't, I don't need this to depend, to fill my heart's desire, to fill that empty spot in my heart, to fill my, my dream. Mm -hmm. I don't need a magical strategy. I have enough uh, interactions with the market, enough data with the market that I can now do pattern recognition, apply the right strategy, and I have a confidence in myself and I don't need to know where the market's going. I don't need to be right. I can just be here. Wow. And then that stage is where they can start making consistent money. And we're, we're also not just making consistent money, but do some honest, deep work within themselves. Oh, what you just said is so important because that deep work sometimes it's all the way down to the identity. If we look at right. knowledge at the top, then we look at turning that knowledge into skill development. Then we look into the behaviors that we can do with that knowledge and skill. And those are held and founded by foundational beliefs about ourselves in the world. And at the bottom of that is, the, is our identity, how we are in the world. And when you're struggling, you know, at those deepest levels, uh, and then you try to fix it with strategies or technical indicators right. when the real issue, like, look at my life, what I said. The problem was not knowledge, not skill, not beliefs, not behaviors, but it was worthiness. So when we go all the way down to that level and clean it out, 
then we can come up and use all that good information that we've accumulated. Right. So it's really a combination, your work your and your life's work. Of course, the success was in trading this, and, and that gave you a, a wonderful life. And by the way, most people don't know, a beautiful home in Marin, which you sold and but it was up on top of the hill, up top of the mountain, and it, it was, was on top absolutely of the perfect. It was gorgeous. Uh, uh, grandkids, there. grandkids trump the hill, the house on the hill, and we're now in San Jose, closer to grandkids. And then, and 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 a whole new venture, a whole new venture. Um, but what I find fascinating is how all of what we've just discussed, as brief as it is, in compacting all of that, because it's years. Years, folks, it's years of work, years of study, years of putting all the pieces of that puzzle together. But from that and and likely leaving the floor, as we all did, which then drove you to your path where you began to develop Mind Muscles Academy. And <clears throat> I remember when I first heard the name of, of your company, your your your, your site. And I thought, it's kind of interesting, but I'll, maybe a lot of people are going to go, what? Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> but the reality is, it's very serious. It's a very serious. It's like, if we don't spend time on developing our minds, and if we're using mind muscles, it's like, no, there are no muscles. We have a brain. But if we don't develop that brain, if we don't, use that brain to help us develop other areas, then success will continually elude many people. Yeah, Not muscles is a great metaphor for how we can exercise our brain and, and improve it. You know, that exactly uh, that neuropsychology has taught us that our brain is malleable, that we can create new neural connections, new patterns. And as a result, uh, we can create the mindset that is the foundation for successful trading. Right. I must share with you and everybody else who's listening that what you've just said, the neuropsychology, because I remember a lot of our early conversations when, when my muscles was developing and, and you were talking about all of those things that you can get lost in the neuropsychology part of the discussion of understanding about the transmitters, the neurotransmitters and what they fire off and all the different, the technical aspects of it, which of course you studied and used. But what I find to be more important and I want people to understand, they don't necessarily have to get the nitty gritty of how your brain operates to understand how you can improve it, how you can improve your own absorption, your own learning, your own the different things because it's always been available to you. And once you start, your brain will take over and do the rest. Oh, I, that's what you're talking about is creating new neural patterns. And once they're set, then we trigger them off. You know, like when you learn to drive a car, you have to think of everything, the clutch, the clutch, that tells you how old I am. <laughs> I know, right? There you go. <laughs> you know, and you have to do all that at once and drive on the freeway and look around. Now, you and I could drive down the freeway in Los Angeles and talk about philosophy while our neural connections, you know, take care of everything else. Right. So basically those neural connections, I mean, we, what we can also talk about is it's like we always, we just breathe. We don't have to remind ourselves to breathe. Once in a while, let me let me take that back. Once in a while, we actually do have to say breathe. Um, but for the most part, we have voluntary and involuntary brain function. And so our heart's going to beat because the brain's telling it to. The brain sends out, you just knock something. Ooh, that hurt my finger. These are all just auto responses by your brain. And But if you're building new neural pathways to overtake the ones that are in existence, that I find to be a very, very interesting concept. But like so many things in our world, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I don't remember my own study with you, that repetition often is what is going to be needed to make that new connection to hold that new connection until your brain develops and, and will automatically just go to that versus an old pattern 
Oh, that's exactly right. So then the question is, how do we start that new pattern that isn't there? Well, first, if we recognize it's not there and that no, normally we hit just what we would experience as confusion. But if we understand, okay, the neural patterns aren't there. So what I do is I set it up so that we create the future behaviors in a way that feel better. So a person, I step them into a new context. We describe it in detail, what it's like, so that they can start to imagine it. And then I say, now, how does that feel? Mm. Oh, man, that feels better. So now we've got an invitation and an enticement to step into creating those new neural patterns. Because if it doesn't feel better in the moment, our brain is and our survival mechanism are going to go, well, do I really want to go there? And I'm going to sabotage it. And I'm going to think of all the other things I need to do. Oh, I need to cut my fingernails today. I need to wash my hair. We're going to do all that. And I, by the way, I still do that occasionally. <laughs> um, you, you just made some some great statements um because they're things that that we continue to do today and that are necessary and because old habits die hard mm -hmm. and new habits even if you do them every single day for 30 days don't necessarily just continue to repeat so how and where did you bring in and for the lack of a better word, because I just have to relate it to myself, old tapes, mm. the old tapes that rich, you're only worth two hundred thousand right. dollars. That's an old tape that came yes. in from yeah. somewhere out of your past. And those old tapes, folks, now I call them old tapes, but they're 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 things from the past that continue to come in today, even when we reach levels of success especially when we leave. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, I didn't want to go can, there. We, okay, go ahead. Keep going. going. But it is true that especially when we reach levels of success, because we're up, we're feeling not necessarily vulnerable, we're feeling good. And that's so often when that negative part that's been sitting there waiting, it's not gone anywhere, comes in and goes, ding. Sometimes it gets really clever <laughs> and then just kind yeah. of drop off yeah. um, because I find that when we're dealing with um, Rich and I both do coaching. So we do have things in common, um, but I want to kind of lean and kind of move towards mind metrics and SCT and, and things of that nature, because that's kind of what starts to help us deal with all these things are going to come in and derail us. All these things that are going to knock us off our path. All these things are going to be like Rich or, or whomever. Joe, you're not worth it. Um, because I think that any of us that kind of that are living in 2022, it would be a lie to say that our past doesn't continue to come back to just remind us, not necessarily haunt us, but remind us to give us a nudge, to give us a push, um, as if to say, I'm still here. But there are ways of dealing with that. There are ways where you can put that in its place. And I know that there's not any chance that you're going to be able to give that solution during this particular podcast. But I want to make reference that that has come into your world. But it's, it, what the result and action is, is a lot of your work that is available for people. Yeah, and what you talked about, you know, making those first neural connections, we break them down. And you mentioned a couple of things. One is our set scores. And that's a result of what I call the golden keys. Awareness mm -hmm. and the set scores uh, are awareness of our physical sensations. In fact, I'm gonna take a moment here. Uh, I noticed my chest a little tight. Is that what I want? No, guts a little tight, okay, posture. So I just did a sensation awareness, my emotions. God, this is so much fun with you, Michael. I'm feeling yeah. almost giddy and fun. My thought process, well, that is right now involved in the higher level functions of just communicating. And that's okay. So we have the awareness, the sensations, the emotions, thoughts. And next, this is the important part, is acceptance. 
Yes. What if I go, oh, my stomach's tight. Damn, I'm getting all rich. Relax. You never get it right. You don't relax. You tighten up your stomach. You are. <laughs> right. Right. So if we have awareness and then we beat ourselves up about what we discover, uh, what, <laughs> that means we're just continuing the process at a little higher level. So the nest is acceptance. Oh, that's interesting. I've tightened my stomach again. Oh, take a breath. Okay. So we have awareness, acceptance, and then from that higher level, we can get agency. How, what do I want to experience right now? And that's part of the golden keys. Now, we put that in a broader uh, journal called our uh, market metrics. And the market metrics breaks all these things down so we can easily journal them just by simply clicking. And as a coach, what I get is a whole bunch of green, yellow, and red squares. And I can see exactly where we need to concentrate. And if you're doing this by yourself, you can see immediately what is costing you money and where your money is being made by uh, looking down the column from your uh, set scores to your uh, actual behaviors in the market and the things that you used to do and behaviors that are better. And you can see the impact on your on your PL directly. Oh, yes. one of the nice things about trading is, you know, it's the same functions, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're in a job or career, or you're a mom or dad, or whatever it is, all these things are the same, but trading gives you that immediate feedback. Bang. It sure does. Oh my God. Bang. And yes. it's no excuses. There's no uh, fuzziness about it. It's not five no. years away. It's no. bang. <laughs> it's immediate. It is immediate. That That is so true. In fact, Please make that point again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's you, you're so correct that there's so many things where it could be a delayed reaction. There's so many things where it could be like, oh yeah, or you deal with it later. When you're in the market, folks, it's an immediate. It's an immediate, wow, look what I just did. I just made five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Or holy crap, I just lost a thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. It's immediate and it is a punch. You, you were so right in doing it and like that, because whether you're feeling it here, 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 wherever the punch happens to come in, it is real. It is real. And it gives you multiple feedback. It gives you yes. a lot of data very quickly. Yes. Which is interesting is that given that quick amount of feedback, the amount of data that you get, I've gotten principles out of it that I've now carried to a broader audience. The principles are the same, but you don't get nearly the number of feedbacks and the immediacy of the feedbacks out there. But if we can use those same principles, they can be really helpful. And and this is all a part of Mind Muscles Academy. So I, I know that there is a specific course called Mind uh, uh, Metrics and I have worked together with you on a lot of that and then also seeing it in action yep. and some of the groups that we, we sit together on. And I just want to testify or give my testimony to the fact that if there, people get to make a choice and there's a lot of choices that I think we can make to accept, right? Because you started at the beginning. Awareness, acceptance puts us into agency. And it's in that area that we're, that we're calling agency where we actually can do the work on ourselves, that we can make things change. We can do things differently. Yep. Um, but what I like about My Muscles Academy is the work that you've put in and structured it. There's, there's structure to this. You don't jump from A to Z without going through the rest of the letters. Yeah, and, and a lot of traders do just jump straight to Z and then they spend years frustrating and blowing out tens of thousands of dollars. And blame and they, you. <laughs> no, seriously, right? What they what? They blame you. Your, um, your, your book is nothing. Your, your work, look, it didn't do anything for me. It's like, well, how did you do it? Well, I did chapter one and then I went to chapter 35. Yeah. What's the problem? So, so by creating the market metrics, by creating steps, uh, offering private coaching, uh, working in groups like you're in the groups with us, you can then have a group and support and see every step so that when you miss something, you skip something, 
when there's a foundational layer that's not available to you yet, uh, we can get at it right away rather than just being frustrated and just not knowing what is wrong. Right. Right. And I think that's so important. So because I, I you see me out of the corner of my eye, I'm looking up yeah. at the clock because we got to keep things together. Spend some time, please, on Mind Muscles Academy. What's, what is there? What's offered? And include the book. Yeah, we started out uh, pretty small. And now we've grown to uh, our core course for traders is called Compass. And it includes all the basics. We have weekly meetings that you're very familiar with. We have yes. private coaching. And we have a whole bunch of different exercises that really focus on very specific issues that traders have. I have reviewed over 2,000 trader assessments. Wow. And uh, I haven't had anything new come up <laughs> in many years. In other words, the, we've, we've seen it all. We've seen all the psychological issues, all the impediments, all the self-sabotage, all the ways people limit themselves. And as a result, we have taken each one of those to make sure that there is an invitation to another step that gets beyond that. And right. what I've seen, because as I mentioned of the frequency of feedback with traders, I've now expanded those core principles uh, to everybody. And I wrote a book called A Private Conversation with Money. It's on Amazon and other major sellers. And that looks at our belief system around our worthiness, around money, our beliefs around money. We absorb so much crap from our culture, from our parents, yes. from our job, from our educational system, uh, especially now our culture is so split around money and economics that that we, if we absorb it, we start to think, oh my God, uh, what, what can I do that's right? And as a result, we limit our energy. So yes. what if we were in rapport with money, meaning, and wealth? And the book then takes Joe, uh, a character, a journalist, and takes him through all the major steps that I've discovered that how people stop themselves, themselves and how to invite them into a world of rapport with money, meaning, and success. Right. I, and folks, I want to tell you, and I've read the book. I helped edit the book. You did. I've, 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 I've been involved. This is a compelling read. Now, I've been a trader for 40 years. I've traded in a lot of different places. But never once was making a connection on the problems and the hangups and the things that would come into my life now and then were... I could deal with and I could find out where they were coming from and I could move it up to awareness, to acceptance and get into that agency position mm -hmm. and do something about it. Now, reading the book has changed all of that for me. And I'm 68 years old. So that, you know, not that that's the end of the world, folks, because it truly is not. In fact, it could be the beginning. Mm -hmm. But we tend to believe... <clears throat> <laughs> excuse me, as we get older, that we're becoming set in our ways. And I think with the process that and how you've put the book together allows people to go like, hmm, I don't have to be stuck. I don't have to, to continue to feel this way. I have choice. I can make choice. And I'm telling you, Richard, I I want to shout it from the rooftops because I've I've run across people that are, yeah I read the book yeah it's a good book but not really applies to me I'm like really really so you have no problems between you and your job and the amount of money you get paid or you don't get paid or if you're a trader on how much money you make or you don't make or being able to accept you know a, a bad trade or et cetera et cetera et cetera. And usually by then they go like, well, no, of course I do. That's life. It's like, okay, that's life. But you don't have to stay down that path. You can choose how you experience your life in new ways. Absolutely. And Richard, I, well, first of all, thank you for taking the time to write that book. 
because being your friend and being a part of your life while you were writing it was not always the easiest thing. Because getting a hold of you was like, I'm writing my book. Yeah. Or editing it or getting through the editing process and, and how overwhelming that is. Yeah. Um, and even now, just pri prior, folks, I, I, we were just talking before we started our podcast, and Richard's now doing his own recording of, of audio, the audio, audio, book. audio book. And so we're, and I was like, well, how's that going? And it's like, I get the, I get the whole list. It's what it's not as easy as one would think. And it's all the beauty um, of it that, that counts. And so um, I, I just want to make sure people understand, don't be put off by the title of the book. Don't be put off by how the book is laid out in terms of the title, the, the name of your title character. I mean, yes, it's a little kitschy, but yes, it's like it makes sense because instead of trying to be specific about, well, it's this type of a mindset. No. So may I give it away, the title of the character? Sure. Joe Everidge. Every, E-V-E-R-Y. R-I-E. Every. Every, as in Joe Everidge. Joe you know, we, we Joe so and so, Joe so and so, right? Even so, please forgive us for the people that got the name Joseph. <laughs> but it's it's particularly very appropriate because it's a it's anybody, it's everybody. Yep. And the only thing we probably needed to do was to add his wife, Joanne Every. <laughs> you know, because it's it's not. It is not confined to a particular sex or race or anybody. It's everybody. And and that kind of puts us all in the same bucket. That to say that some people don't suffer through this stuff, yes, they do. Yes, we all do. Oh, and so I for one say thank you for spending the time in writing the book. I I really, by the way, it's on Amazon. I highly recommend it. If you're having problems with any aspect of your life, particularly one that's surrounding money, this book is important. It lets you relax and realize you're not the only one, but it also gives you options on what you can do. And folks, as much as these exercises you may find to say, ah, just not for me, push through all that. Do the exercise. Those are creating you the will, new neural circuits. Not only are you creating a new neural circuit, you're getting in touch with parts of yourself that have haunted you for a long time. I did. I did. And I'll stay, stay straight out just so everybody understands. It's like, yes, I've had a tremendous amount of success in my life and on many trading floors, but yet when I sat down and did what in the book, it's the three chair exercise. That's all I'm going to say. It was better than eye opening. It was expanding my mind. It was like, wow. And Richard and I did it together in, in a group that we all participate in. And one of the comments that you made was like, wow. It's a whole different voice. And it's because the freedom of being able to recognize and allow that voice, which is here, to actually have its own self. Opened it up for me to go in and deal. Now, folks, it doesn't mean that like day two, it's like, oh, that voice is gone. That's never going to come back. No, these are all parts of us and there's much more involved. But it's a start. It's a starting point. And I know it's, it's the people that I've recommended to the book, I'm hoping that they've come and they've purchased the book and just read it for themselves and take these exercises seriously um, because they are useful. They do have a purpose. But I think it really comes down to making a decision is, is how strong do you want to make a change. How strongly do you want to get in touch with what's really happening? And I think each one of us has to make that decision on our own. So as we wrap this up for today, 
Uh, first of all, thank you ever so much. Um, again, okay. Richard and I have been friends for a very, very long time. And so we could go and talk for another two or three hours and and we wouldn't be bored. Um, no, certainly not. <laughs> you know, we have plenty that we, we talk about. Um, I will try to, but but let, let us know, does www mindmusclesacademy.com or is it or do we could shorten it to www.mindmuscles.com mindmuscles.com uh, oh well actually if you for traders it's mindmusclesfortraders.com that takes you directly to the trading stuff so you can focus on that for people interested in the private conversations with money in fact what i'm going to do is you can go to conversations.money slash michael and what I'll do is we'll provide the free online course for the book. And you can go there, you can sign up, get the course, because I know that you have done so much for your traders. And I'd like to offer this as an additional value that you can bring to them. So um, right. conversations.money slash Michael. Thank you. That's very kind. Um, also, I want to make sure that people understand that um, our websites, Richard, our websites are kind of commingle, but... I will have on my website, there's courses that you offer. One is in Mind Metrics. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other ones? Uh, oh, there's the, the, the market. The first compass is the, is the one that encompasses, encompasses everything. The market metrics specifically for traders, you can do that separately and on your own, but most prefer either doing it as private coaching or with a group. And if anybody's interested in a group specifically for traders for next year, uh, let me know. I'm thinking about starting one up. We have one now called the Wealth Workshop, which, Michael, you're part of and been doing just great contributions, by the way. But nice. that's for a broader audience. So I'm thinking next year, let's focus on traders and let's get this done. So you can send me an email, rich at mindmuscles.com, and I'll make sure you get notified if we start that up. Thank you. And also, friends, you can also notify, send something to me and um, my email address will be all over this. So don't worry about that. Um, but Richard, thank you. Thank you. Thank Michael. you for coming and spending pleasure. some time with me today. Um, yeah, we always dig down. You know, you what I appreciate about you is uh, getting beyond just the surface and just beyond the, you know, the obvious things that advice for traders and uh, you really make a positive invitation to get down to the things that really matter. So thank you. Because we're, you're welcome. Um, and just as a little tidbit, um, Richard and I have been slowly but surely putting together uh, what I call our swan song of courses. <laughs> oh, no, not our swan, not our <laughs> swan song. And it's simply because it's like we keep edging each other. It's like, are you yeah. going to retire? Are you going to retire? Well, retire? I don't know if I'm going to retire. Well, I think I should. Well, maybe I should. You know, and 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 Richard's wife and my spouse are all like, yeah, it might be a good idea. Okay, we could get some other stuff. But what we're going to be working on now, because I I've come in with an, with an extra piece that we both have an interest in. Sweet. That might make it totally worth everybody's while to come in and join us but it's going to be a group of courses that one could be picked and chosen and put together and it will include coaching with richard or coaching with me um my coaching tends to go to a live market so and i'm it's like let's go get into the frying pan together and then because your worst self will come out very quickly <laughs> yes. and we'll know what we need to work on um, and so and that Richard also offers coaching services. And so we're trying to combine all of that, plus the courses that Richard has, plus the courses that I have about Elliott Wave and Fibonacci and strategy building. Mm -hmm. And then combining all of our, his mindset, mindset, ladies and gentlemen, it is so vitally important. Go learn about it. It is possible to change. Even at this late stage in life, it's possible to change. So again, thank you. Stay tuned because I definitely will be bringing it to um, a podcast. And I'm sure that when it's all put together, Richard and I will come and do another one. We will. So we will. My friend, thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. I so, so appreciate you coming in with me today. 
I'm market analyst Michael Filigera of Traders Helping Traders, helping you make informed trading decisions for the week ahead.